God. Praise God. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, where we edify, we exalt, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here, we also call sinners to salvation through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are going to be talking about God's rainbow for a cursed earth. God's rainbow for a cursed earth. And a short reading, of course, is going to be from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. And a case study could be the rainbow. Yeah, the rainbow we see in the sky. But we are going to go a little bit deeper by the help of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father God, hallowed be your holy name. Through the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we have come unto thee to say thank you. Thank you for the provision that you gave us in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that God, the Holy Spirit, we bring this message to our hearts to open the eyes of those who are yet to see this message in the rainbow and to strengthen the faith of those of us who have already accepted that which you have provided in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Father God. For in Jesus' name, I'll be praying. Amen and amen. Our foundation text is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42. We read verses 6 and 7. Isaiah 42, 6 to 7. I, the Lord, this is Jehovah God speaking now, have called thee in righteousness and we hold thine hand, hallelujah, and we keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. Now, this is a messianic um, passage speaking in uh, a cryptic way about the Lord Jesus Christ. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what is the meaning of God's rainbow for a cursed earth? Um, if you're a Bible student, uh, you will see that from Genesis to Revelation, God will always say some things about it. This will be a sign unto you, or this is my sign. Uh, if you see this, then you know this is what I'm saying. So anytime God speaks about a sign, he's either saying, this is how you will know that indeed I am the one speaking to remove your doubt. For example, the angel told the shepherds, uh, when you see a baby wrapped in a swaddling cloth, in the manger, then that's where you're going. You've seen the Messiah. Uh, but also it could mean this is a sign. God may be saying, look at the characteristics of that sign as a way for you to know when the real thing comes. All right? So let's look at, let's consider six things about the rainbow that God put in the sky after the flood and he promised Noah that he would not destroy the earth again with flood. Uh, so we are going to consider six things, but today in this lesson, we are going to consider four because we don't have the time. Uh, next lesson, we consider the rest and then we conclude, all right? So the first characteristic that we need to consider about the rainbow from the story of Noah 
is the position of God's rainbow. The rainbow can only be seen high in the sky. Nobody, at least to my knowledge, has ever seen the rainbow under the ground. No. Or in a cave, in a dark cave. It's always in the sky. Through the story of Noah, God is giving the world a preview, you see. Like, this is what is to come. Of what was to come, that salvation would not come from anywhere else, but from heaven. The Lord Jesus said, I came down from heaven. He said it himself, you see. And he also said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. This tells us that Christ Jesus is God's rainbow that was given as a sign to Noah. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given unto men whereby we must be saved. It's only the name of the Lord Jesus. The rainbow is placed in the sky without anything attached to it from the earth. This is because everything on earth has been cursed by God. Likewise, true salvation from God has no good works of human effort attached to it because human effort is accursed. The Bible says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift. Salvation is the free gift of God. Not a result of your good works. So that you will not be able to boast. So that I will not be able to boast, you see. If we will come into God's perfect heaven on the merit of how good we are being, then we have to God. So you can tell God, or I can tell God, move out of the way and let me sit on the throne. Because I came here by being perfect, like you, you see. But since you and I cannot boast of that, so salvation is the free gift when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ. The salvation that can save was thought by God the Father, bought by God the Son, and wrought by God the Holy Spirit. This is the position of God rainbow. If they are telling you to accept any other thing or any other one or any other God apart from the bread that came from heaven, listen, they are lying to you and they want to take you to hell. Let's go to Romans chapter 10 verse 9, Romans 10 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, and shalt believe in thy heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. To believe is to receive. The word we say sin is believing. No. Not when you are in business with God. To believe is to receive. Moving on. The, photo, the photography of God's rainbow. God's rainbow can only be seen when it's broad daylight. The kind of salvation which God was projecting to the earth through the story of Noah will be the type that will have nothing to do with darkness, just as the rainbow cannot be seen without light, because God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. A young lady, uh, a few years back, I watched an interview. Uh, thank God she came to the true salvation in the Lord Jesus. But she said uh, the time she used to smoke weed and take drugs and use drugs, then she began to hear a voice telling her that uh, that voice was going to use her to write a new Bible. And she began to write. I mean, she brought that thing to, to, to the... Uh, testimony, the documentary, 
And she began to write. And this took like months for her to be writing under the influence of drugs. Thank God she came to the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. And that was how she knew that demons were talking to her, you see. So the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have nothing to do with darkness in any form. No. The rainbow is made up of seven different colors. Seven in itself is the color of, is the number of God, you see. These seven colors are yoked together in one solid shape, yet they are not mixed together. God is using this to tell us that all our individual needs are wrapped up and embodied in the salvation that will come from him through the person of Christ Jesus. Whatever your need is can only be met when you become saved, generally saved, in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says you are complete in him, you see. The story is told of one of the saints in the first century that Caesar was going to kill. And he said, if you don't renounce your faith in Christ Jesus, uh, I, I won't let you do business. You won't be able to buy anything. And, he said, and that um, saint said, that, that believer said, I don't need anything that you could deny me of from doing business or doing commerce. And then Caesar said, if you don't renounce your faith, I will take away everything you have. He said, I don't have anything that you can take. All my stuff, they are in heaven, you see. So what can you do with such a man? You can't scare him because he has nothing that he's looking forward to on earth. At the same time, you can't say, we won't, let, we won't sell anything to you you won't be able to buy. Because he said, I'm complete in Christ Jesus. You see. So we are complete in Christ Jesus. And the Bible also says, no good thing will he withhold from them which walk uprightly. Additionally, the seven colors of the rainbow are not colors that are alien to the earth. No. Uh, I believe we have blue, red, yellow, green, um, orange, Violet and blue and, uh, and indigo. Uh, those are the seven colors of uh, the rainbow. If my elementary science has still served me well. You see, these are all colors that we most of us we have in our in our wardrobes or in our gardens in different colors of flowers. You see, so they are not alien to us. This was God sending us a message that the salvation that will come from Him will be the type that we could relate to, you see. A Buddhist cannot say they can talk to, the, uh, to, to Buddha, or they can have a uh, Hindu that uh, they, they can have relationship, personal relationship with Indra, their God. No, one of their gods, by the way, really. But a believer in Christ Jesus will tell you, all oh, the Lord Jesus spoke to me, you see, is personal. The Bible speaks of the Lord Jesus as the word that became flesh and lived among us. Even though he's God, he lived among ordinary folks of his time. He ate with them. He talked with them. It was not a carved image or some terrifying God that would say, if your relative doesn't believe in me, Chop their heads off. Oh no. You see. So it was not a curved image which could not see or speak, hear or have emotions. The Lord Jesus was approachable and could be touched. He often called himself the Son of Man, which was his title as the representative of mankind. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. I'm reading from New King James Version, Hebrews 4, 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, hallelujah, but was in all points tempted as we are. 
That is, he experienced what we also experience like pains, like suffering, like sadness. Not like maybe he experienced lust, lusting after women. No, that is the problem of the blood of Adam in us. The Lord Jesus doesn't have that. So he didn't have that problem. No, Adam gave that to us. So if you are lusting after women, don't say, why well, the Lord Jesus was tempted. No, that's the problem Adam, your forefather, gave you. Okay? The Lord Jesus didn't have that. But he knew pains, he knew sadness, yet without sin. He experienced that not because he sinned. He experienced that because he wanted to feel what we also feel. He needed to take our pain. So he took that pain upon himself. And that will tell you, any God that tells you to go chop off your relative or your loved one because they, they change to Christianity, it's not a real God. Because if he had any feelings, he wouldn't be saying that. You see, he took our form so he could look for all, hallelujah, that we might be hooked as one by the way of his cross. In Christ Jesus, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile. That, no, we all become one together in the body of Christ and we are yoked and become one with God. He took our form so he could look for all that we might be hooked as one by the way of his cross. Moving on. The third thing that we need to consider from uh, the rainbow in Noah's story as it previewed the coming of the Lord Jesus to save mankind is the provision of God's rainbow. Before the story of Noah, the rainbow had never been seen nor heard of. Oh no. God created the rainbow and introduced it to Noah. God spoke of the rainbow as a sign of his covenant with the earth. If you were tracking with me in a foundation text, he said, I will give you as a covenant to the people. When God, Jehovah, God, the, Son, uh, God the Father, Jehovah, was speaking about God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, I will give you as a covenant, you see. God called it my rainbow, you see. God used the rainbow in Noah's story to tell us of how he will give the Lord Jesus, his only begotten son, to the world for a spiritual rescue from the curse which had come upon the earth. Just as God promised to Noah that he would never again curse the earth for man's sake, even though the heart of mankind is always evil, you see. God said, I already cursed the earth. You say, really? Have you ever seen an animal try to give birth to a baby animal? I tried to watch one time, many years ago. I walked away. I couldn't look at it. By the help, by the grace of God, I have been to the labor room to give birth to my children. It's not fun. Whether by natural or the other way, it's not fun. Have you seen plants? They are to fight through coming from under the soil to appear above the soil. That is not easy, you see. So everything the book of Romans 8 says, the creation itself is groaning because the creation has been cursed, you see. Now, uh, God sent his rainbow, he set it in the sky to tell us something that I will never, as long as you see the rainbow, each time you remember what I said, Noah, I stand by my word. I would like to quote John Gill from Cahan's Answer in Genesis article. He said, uh, in the title taken by the rainbow, he said, though it is a bow, speaking about the rainbow, you see, it's a bow yet without arrows. And so is a token of mercy and kindness. 
and not of wrath and anger. So, end of quote. So, God put the rainbow in the sky to tell Noah, I will not curse the earth again. And I will not flood the earth again. Now, this will be my sign to you, Noah. Not because I'm going to forget. No, but so you can always rest easy and remember that I will never forget my promise. God provided the rainbow as a sign of his long suffering. God said, I know the heart of man is so evil. It doesn't mean you're going to change, but even with that, I'll rather take another route. I will not curse or flood the earth again. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Hallelujah. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us world, not willing, you see, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is the provision why the Lord God gave us the Lord Jesus Christ. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He is taking his time just to see if you will come around. If you are a pagan, you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't believe God is real, listen. God is taking his time and is still holding back his judgment, not because he forgot, but he wants your brain to come back. You see, if he had judged the world some 15 or 20 years ago, I would have been in hell. But because he didn't destroy the world, then that's why I'm here. And that is what he's still holding on for you too. All right? Moving on. The perversion of God's rainbow. The rainbow colors have been rearranged, reshaped, and have been used by various people for various causes. The rainbow has also been drawn into all kinds of mythologies. Evolutionists will have us believe that the rainbow is a meteorological phenomenon. Don't, don't, don't be tripped by that big word. It's just, yeah, we are, we are saying scientific, scientific garbage. And that the story of the rainbow in the Bible is a myth, you see. I just told you it's a science, scientific garbage. This is the greatest perversion of God's rainbow by a group of anti-creation scientists who would rather believe in the theory of evolution that has been plagued with so many unanswered logical questions, you see. They will tell your children and your grandchildren in the nursery school or in the kindergarten that they came from animal. You see, because they don't want to agree that there is God before whom they are going to stand one day and give account of all the nonsense they have done. They don't want to agree. So it's easy. They will just they just follow Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, who was off his rockers when he said that he came from an animal. He came from an animal, God made me. You see, instead of accepting the fact of intelligent design, what is the origin of life? Huh, Darwin? If everything came by chance, what is the, where did life come from? Where did the mind come from? The Bible, the Lord God asked, who has put wisdom in the mind? Who? Evolution? The devil is a liar. They don't want to believe in God, who is the intelligent designer of all things. That is the greatest perversion of God's rainbow. Not the LGBTQ flying that flag. It's a form of perversion, but I'm telling you, when you look at little kids and you tell them you come from an animal, 
There is no God. That is the greatest perversion. The rainbow is a supernatural creative act of God. We can believe the story of Noah's flood as an actual event that took place because the Lord Jesus, who has been historically proven to have lived on earth, mentioned the story of Noah and also likened his, flood, his second coming to the uh, flood of Noah. Psalm 14, verse 1. Psalm 14, verse 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the fool, and the Hebrew word for this is neighbor, that is a, a windbag, an insane person. See, cuckoo in the head, uh, Dr. McGee will say, not playing with food deck. You see, somebody who has lost it, lost the plot. A fool, an insane person, had said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good, you see. None that doeth good. But if you come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and you accept him, you accept his merit as the only merit that you have to go to heaven, then God looks at you and says, you're good. Not because of the good things you have done, but because he's looking at you through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to Psalm 10, verse 4. Psalm 10, verse 4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance. I wish I could go into quotations after quotations of scientists who actually believe that Darwin's theory of evolution has problems because of so many unanswered questions that Darwin's theory cannot fix. And that only left the intelligent design, which is by God, on the table for them. But they actually confess that that will lead them to believe that there's a God somewhere. And they don't want to believe God. I wish I could give you all those quotations with their names. But we only have so much time. The wicked through the pride of their countenance will not seek after God, the philosophers, you see. God is not in all his thoughts. To believe God's truth is for your good. To refute it is to be refused. Let me say that again, Mr. Scientist, Mr. Atheist, or Agnostic, or Miss, I don't believe in this Jesus thing, lesson up. To believe God's truth is for your good. I'm telling you. To refute it, is to be refused. Don't refuse God, please. What have we done so far? What is the meaning of God's rainbow for a cursed earth? We consider the following four things about God's rainbow in this lesson. We are going to conclude next lesson by God's grace, if the Lord tires, okay? Number one, we consider the position of God's rainbow that the true salvation is from heaven, just as the rainbow is in heaven and needs no human good works to receive it, that is, receive that salvation, just as nobody helped God to put the rainbow in the sky. And it is God's free gift, just like the rainbow. We didn't do anything for the rainbow to appear in the sky. No, the rainbow just appears, you see. Second, we consider the photography of God's rainbow. God's salvation is all light, no darkness in it. Through it, all our needs are met, whether physical, uh, spiritual, daily, or eternal. All our needs are wrapped up and are met in the salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's plan of salvation it's not difficult to understand. You don't need to travel from your country to a certain place in the Middle East and run around the devil seven times and stone the devil uh, to get salvation. No, that is not God's plan of salvation. The Bible says the word is near you. It's near your mouth, right where you are. If you are ready to give your life to Jesus, it's right there with you. 
and he will receive you if you confess. The provision of God's rainbow, God's salvation, wants everyone to be saved. That's the whole point, folks. Why the Lord Jesus came, that everyone should be saved, and that's why God has not destroyed the world. And then uh, we consider the perversion of God's rainbow. Despite anti-biblical theories that there is no God, God's rainbow testifies to the existence of the Creator. Mr. Scientist or Miss Scientist cannot say there is no God because everything around us is screaming there is God. Hallelujah. We will finish this next week. Now, if you want more of our lessons, our link is coming up. Uh, please follow that link. For more of our, our lessons, all right? Father God, we thank you. Because you're good and your mercy endures forevermore. Oh, Father, bless all the listening hearts and ears. Let this world, oh Lord, be burned into a spirit, oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only in the Lord Jesus. As must play the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good News Reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry, 